Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. <music> President Pranam Mukherjee addresses the nation, advocates freeing public discourse from violence, asserts that the country derives its strength from tolerance. Six Congress members of Parliament suspended from Lok Sabha for five days. Speaker announces the action for their highly in unbecoming conduct in the House. Distortion of expunged remarks by some media houses likely to be referred to Privileges Committee. Members of 12 parties give notice for the privilege motion. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley introduces the Banking Regulation Amendment Bill 2017 in Lok Sabha. It will allow RBI to direct banking companies to initiate proceedings on stressed assets. Top story this evening. In his final address to the nation as President, Pranam Mukherjee today said that India's soul resides in pluralism and tolerance and that the nation derives strength from tolerance. Expressing concern over the increasing violence in society, Pranam Mukherjee said that public discourse should be free from all forms of violence, physical as well as verbal. Thanking the citizens for their trust and confidence in him, the president underscored the importance of creating an inclusive society, saying that financial inclusion is at the core of an equitable society. Pranam Mukherjee is demitting office after completing five years as the constitutional head of the state. He took office on the 25th of July, 2012. We must free our public discourse from all forms of violence, physical as well as verbal. Only a non-violent society can ensure the participation of all sections of the people, especially the marginalized and the dispossessed in the democratic process. Power of nonviolence has to be resurrected to build a compassionate and caring society. As I had said on assuming the office of the president, education is the alchemy that can take India to its next golden age. A reordering of society is possible through the transformative power of education. For that, we have to upgrade our higher institutions of learning to world-class levels. Our education system must accept disruption as a norm and prepare our students to manage and build upon their disruptions. Meanwhile, President-elect Ramnath Kovind will take over as the country's 14th president on Tuesday. He will be administered the oath of office by Chief Justice of India, Justice J.S. Kehar, at a special function in the Central Hall of Parliament. Kovind was elected president on the 20th of July. On to House uh, proceedings and Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurin on Monday indicated that distortion and reporting of expunged remarks by certain media houses may be referred to the Privileges Committee. The chair had last week stated that media should not report anything expunged from the records. Raising the issue during Zero Hour, nominated member KTS Tulsi said that members from 12 parties gave a notice under Rule 188 for breach of privilege by certain media houses for distorting remarks by SPMP Naresh Agarwal. We don't mind criticism, but when they were presenting this program, there was a banner on the screen of the television, not a shred of shame. Now, this is with regard to every MP. It's sought to be defamed in this manner. We don't mind criticism. We welcome it. But this is not the, no, not the manner in which a dialogue takes place and they are, they, are, they, they are defaming. This is per se defamatory, not a shred of shame. So I submit that more than 50 MPs are here, Millard, and uh, this, this matter should be referred to the Privileges Committee. I move this motion. Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurin said that distortion of remarks by any member amounts to breach of privilege of the Member of Parliament. The other day also, I said in the House that media should not report anything that has been 
expanded in the house. I said that. But at that time, it was reported, it was said that there is report, it's reporting. And also, the, when members make some speech, if it is distorted, that, that amounts to the breach of privilege. And uh, your notice, especially when it is signed by more than 50 people, and if it uh, refers to distortion of what is said in the House, will be referred to Privilege Committee. The Samajwadi leader had made these remarks during a short duration discussion on the reported increase in incidents of lynching and atrocities against minorities and Dalits on July 20th. Kriti Mishra, Rad Sabha TV. Members of the Trinamool Congress and AIDMK claim anomalies in the medical entrance test need and had adversely, adversely affected thousands of students in West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. The government assured the House that it will look into the matter. Raising the issue during Zero Hour, Derek O'Brien of the TMC alleged that different question papers were being given to students attempting the common medical entrance examination in regional languages in West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. He also pointed out towards a report that claims NCERT wants to remove references to Ramindranath Tagore from school books. So this time in Bengal, example in Tamil Nadu, out of 56,000 people who did that exam, 40,000 wrote it in Bengali. They got a separate paper and the results have been disastrous. Those boys and girls in our two states of Tamil Nadu and Bengal have been deprived. AIADMK members, on the other hand, demanded complete exemption for Tamil Nadu students from NEET and walked into the well of the house. To frame the uniform NEET syllabus, prescribe textbooks and make it very popular and make it popular okay. in all these papers. It's a request to the government. It's a time to the students. Yes. Then only you can conduct NEET. Health Minister J.P. Nadda assured the house that the government will look into the anomalies. The Honorable MPs from Tamil Nadu had come and met me. We are looking into the matter. Raised they by have, West Bengal also. No, they had not come, but yes, the issue is the same. The issue is the same. Yeah, yeah. We are looking into the matter. The National Eligibility Come Entrance Test is an entrance examination for students who wish to study any graduate medical course or postgraduate course in government or in private medical colleges. NEET replaced the All India Pre Medical Test and all individual MBBS exams conducted by states or colleges in 2013. Kriti Mishra, Sabha TV. A new law on cleaning the Ganga River is on the anvil. Water Resources Minister Uma Bharti informed the Upper House on Monday that all the details of the new legislation will be shared with the states concerned before tabling it in Parliament. She also assured the House that various initiatives taken by the central government for cleaning Ganga River will show results in 2018. A new law to lay down guidelines for cleaning the Ganga and implement the Namami Gange program is being formulated. Water Resources Minister Uma Bharti told the Upper House during question now that it was a gigantic task to clean the Ganga River where crores of people bathe every year. Ganga ke liye 20,000 crore ka allotment hua tha. Sabse pehle Ganga ki yojana bani, purane project ko complete karne ke liye hume lagbhag 8,000 crore lagenge. Aur naye initiative lene ke liye hume lagbhag 12,000 crore lagenge. Main yaha ghoshna karti hu ki 2018 mein jo maine ghoshna ki hai, usme Ganga ke result aane lag jayenge. Humne itni taiyari ki hui hai. Earlier, members raised questions on the efficacy of government's ambitious Namami Gangi program. Mantri ji se puchna chata hu ye jo rural development wing hai, kya ye aap is wing ke dwara aisa koi nadi ka vikas ke liye aapne kam kiya hai, uske parinam kya hai, jo ek aviral pani bahena chahiye aur wo pani sudh hona chahiye aur aspas ke parishas ke uske upar koi dus parinam nahi hona chahiye. तो इस दिशा में सरकार क्या की है इस योजना के लिए 1186 करोड़ रुपया सैंक्शन किया था अभी तक केवल 40 करोड़ पूरे प्रोजेक्ट के लिए ये केवल बनारस के लिए नहीं है 40 हुआ है इसके माने ये है कि इस रफ्तार से आप अगले 20 साल तक गंगा को साफ नहीं कर सकते आंसर में जीरो दिया और कोई भी काम मैं जानना चाहता हूं कितने काम अभी तक तीन साल में पूरे हुए The committee headed by Justice retired Girdhar Malviya prepared the draft of the new Ganga Act. The proposed law is likely to make it illegal to pollute or obstruct the natural flow of Ganga River. It will also prescribe penalties for those indulging in such activities. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Now to Lok Sabha, where Speaker Sumitra Mahajan today suspended six Congress members from the House. The members were protesting against incidents of mob lynching and demanded adjournment of the questioner. Following the rejection of their notice, protesting members stooped into the well. 
and through official papers at the chair. Here are more details. Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan suspended six Congress members from the House for five days on Monday. This followed improper behavior by opposition members who walked into the well and flung official papers towards the chair. The suspended members include Gaurav Gogoi, K. Suresh, Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary, Ranjit Ranjan, Sushmita Dev and M. K. Raghavan. This conduct of members is highly unbecoming and in abuse of the rules of the House, which seeks to undermine the dignity of the House. These members, by persistently and willfully obstructing the business of the House, have caused grave disorder. All the members whom I have named stand automatically suspended from the service of the House for five consecutive sittings in terms of provision of Rule 374A. Prior to the suspension order, the House faced repeated adjournments due to uproar by opposition members. Protesting members raised anti-government slogans and protested against the Speaker for disallowing their adjournment notice over incidents of mob lynching. Adjournment motion we have Rule 56 or 57 के तहत किया है। Rules के मुताबिक ही हमने आपके सामने ये पेश किया है। लेकिन मुझे मुझे बड़ा आश्चर्य हुआ कौन से rule में आप बात कर रहे हैं? बीजेपी का सरकार हुकूमत में आए हैं सारा देश में ये गोरक्षक तंडव कर रहे हैं मैडम प्रधानमंत्री बोलते हैं लेकिन कोई सुनता नहीं है इसके मतलब प्रधानमंत्री के साथ उन लोग का साथ है वो बोलता हम बोलेंगे तुम करते रहो सारा देश में सन्नाटा छा पार्लियामेंट्री अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर अनंत कुमार आल्सो कंडेम द इम्प्रॉपर कंडक्ट ऑफ द ऑपोजिशन मेंबर्स Amid the continuing din, Deputy Speaker M. Thambidurai adjourned the House for the day. With Ravindra Sharan, Bureau Report, Radhu Sabha TV. Well, earlier to that, uh, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley introduced the Banking Regulation Amendment Bill 2017 in Lok Sabha. The bill seeks to amend the Banking Regulation Act 1949 and replaces the Banking Regulation Amendment Ordinance 2017 that was promulgated in May this year. I rise to lay on the table an explanatory statement in Hindi and English version showing the reasons for immediate legislation by promulgation of the banking regulation. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley introducing the Banking Regulation Amendment Bill 2017 in Lok Sabha on Monday. The legislation will authorize the Reserve Bank of India to direct banking companies to initiate proceedings to tackle stressed assets. It will also allow the RBI to initiate insolvency measures for specific stressed assets. Opposing the bill, Trinamool Congress MP Sogata Roy asked for it to be referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee. I oppose the introduction of the Banking Regulation Amendment Ordinance 2017. This is a desperate step by a desperate government. When the banks have reached a stressed asset of 9.64 lakh crores and now RBI is being given power to resolve, to refer matters relating to stressed assets to insolvency and bankruptcy board. If passed, the bill will also empower the RBI to issue other directions to appoint or approve for appointment authorities or committees to advise banking companies to tackle the problem of stressed assets. With Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. A quick break here. We'll be back with more national international news in a bit. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the news tonight. Iraq has assured India that it will find the status of 39 Indians missing for years in conflict zones of the war-ravaged country. The message was conveyed by the visiting Iraqi Foreign Minister Ibrahim al-Jafari to External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj today. On a five-day visit to India, Iraqi Foreign Minister Ibrahim al-Jafari met External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday. Both sides discussed major issues of trade and reconstruction efforts. The ministers also discussed issues relating to the situation in Iraq and the 39 missing Indians in Mosul. Jafri assured Swaraj that he will make all efforts to find their whereabouts. We have no substantial evidence that they were killed or they are still alive, so we cannot give anything in that regard. We are uh, doing efforts and we will gratify concert efforts uh, in that regard. On earlier occasions as well, Iraq has been helpful to India in tracking down nurses who were rescued alive. And despite the constant strain of conflict with the ISIS, India and Iraq have maintained robust trade relations that is valued at 18 billion US dollars. India imports oil while exporting essential food and other items. Iraqi Foreign Minister also met Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan. He also paid a courtesy visit to Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari and discussed present situation prevailing in Iraq. With Akhilesh Suman, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. National Security Advisor Ajit Dawal will travel to China this week to attend the annual BRICS uh, National Security Advisors Summit. Dawal, who will be in Beijing on the 27th and 28th of July, will be the fourth Indian government representative to engage with China since the tri-junction dispute broke out at the India-China-Bhutan border in June last month. Meanwhile, ahead of Dawal's visit, China's foreign ministry has said that meaningful dialogue on the ongoing Doklam standoff was unlikely until India fulfilled the precondition of withdrawing troops from the area. Jammu and Kashmir police arrest many people in connection with the mob lynching of Deputy Superintendent of Police Mohammed Ayub Pandit. Pandit was part of the security grid deployed for devotees attending the night long prayers before Eid at Jama Masjid and was lynched outside the mosque in Srinagar's Nohata area on the 22nd of June. Inspector General of Police Munir Khan said that a militant involved in Pandit's killing was shot dead in an encounter this month. We arrested three main accused persons who were involved in this gruesome act. And after talking to them, after their custodial questioning, they led us to other accused persons who were involved. The NIA also arrested seven people, including the son-in-law of separatist leader Syed Ali Shah Gilani, in connection with its probe into subversive activities in Kashmir Valley. It also arrested two of Gilani's close aides and spokesperson of Hurriyat Conference led by Mirwais Umer Farooq. The National Investigation Agency also named terrorist Hafiz Saeed as an accused in the funding of terror probe. Now uh, to West Bengal, where the CBI on Monday sought an arrest warrant against Gorkha Janmukti Morcha President Bimal Gurung, his wife Asha, and 20 others before a court in connection with the Madan Tamang murder case. The CBI urged the court to issue the, a warrant against the 22 accused who were absent at the hearing. Of the 48 remaining accused, 26 were present in court, but 22 others, including Gurung, were absent. The All India Gorkha League leader Madan Tamang was killed in Darjeeling in May 2010. In another development, the DGP and other senior police officers will visit Darjeeling to examine the law and order situation. Darjeeling entered its 40th day of indefinite shutdown in the hills with all essential services, including delivery of food items and the internet, banned in the area. Except for medicine shops, other restaurants, hotels, schools, colleges remain closed. In more national news, markets on Monday witnessed a strong opening, taking both benchmark indices to record highs in opening trade. Sensex rose nearly 217 points to end at a record high of 32,245. 
while the 50 share NSE Nifty gained 51 points to close at 9,966. All the sectoral indices led by IT, oil and gas, bank, PSU and technology were trading in the positive zone with gains of over half a percent. Analysts said that the continued buying by foreign funds and domestic institutional investors helped the key indices to hit record hits. And here are more national news updates in Nationwide. The Naga People's Front will move court to disqualify 36 NPF legislators in the wake of new Chief Minister T.R. Zeliang forming the government. The NPF legislators will file the petition tomorrow in the Kohima bench of the Guwahati High Court in support of former Chief Minister Shirozile Lezetsu. Rain-battered Orissa is likely to be further hit by heavy to extremely heavy showers tomorrow due to a well-marked low pressure in the region. Extremely heavy rainfall is expected in one or two places in Sundargar, Kionjhar, Mayurbhanj and Barasor and heavy to heavy rainfall is expected to take place in a few places including Angul, Deogar and Sonepur in the next 24 hours. Heavy rains are likely to hit different parts of Uttarakhand, especially the Umau re Kumau region, I'm sorry, over the next 48 hours. As per the Med Department, most places in the state may receive light to moderate rains and heavy showers likely to occur at isolated places. According to the weather forecast, Dehradun will remain generally cloudy with the likelihood of rain and thunder showers and the temperature will hover around 33 degrees Celsius. The Women and Child Development Ministry today launched an online platform to enable women employees of central government to file complaints related to sexual harassment at the workplace. Union Minister Menika Gandhi said that the platform will cater to central government employees in the beginning and thereafter its ambit will be widened to include the private sector as well. International news now and at least 35 people were killed on Monday after a Taliban claimed car bomb struck a bus carrying government staff through a Shiite neighborhood in Kabul. The deadly attacks come as the resurgent Taliban ramp up their offensive across the country. Here's a report. At least 35 people were killed and dozens more injured after a suicide car bomb targeted a bus carrying ministry staff in Afghanistan's capital Kabul. The casualties are expected to rise. The attack completely destroyed the bus along with three other cars and many shops in the area. Security forces cordoned off the area where the blast took place during rush hour. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack, saying they were targeting intelligence service officials. <laughs> The district where the blast occurred is home to the minority Shia Hazara community who were preparing to mark the one-year anniversary of an attack that killed 84 and injured over 300 members of the ethnic minority. Afghanistan's chief executive Abdullah Abdullah and President Ashraf Ghani condemned the attack. The bombing is the latest in a string of attacks recently by the Taliban that said it captured two districts in northern and central Afghanistan over the weekend. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha Television. And here are more updates from across the world in Global Buzz. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan arrived in Kuwait after his visit to Saudi Arabia as part of a diplomatic tour aimed at healing an Arab rift with Ankara's ally Qatar. Saudi King Salman and Erdogan discussed efforts to combat terrorism and its sources of funding. Erdogan arrived in Kuwait and is scheduled to visit Qatar next to conclude the two-day trip. Eight people were found dead inside a sweltering tractor trailer parked at a Walmart store in San Antonio in Texas. Authorities said they were victims of ruthless human traffickers. 30 more people, many in a critical condition and suffering from heat stroke and exhaustion, were also in the trailer that lacked air conditioning or water supply. 
Temperatures outside the vehicle topped 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The truck's driver was arrested and will face charges. Thousands of protesters gathered across Poland holding candlelit vigils demanding that Polish President Andrzej Duda veto the bill overhauling the Supreme Court. Amid mass protests, senators of the right-wing Law and Justice Party agreed to a bill that will remove all Supreme Court justices except those handpicked by the Justice Minister. Critics claim this will undermine judicial independence. That's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us.